Well, good morning, and it's uh, my delight to introduce to you our uh, worship leader and preacher, my daughter, Kathy Haug. Good morning. Just just two things that I want to say before I sit back down, which is my one of my special gifts for Father's Day, of course. Um, when Kathy was born, um, her mom and I had discussed names, but uh, we hadn't quite settled on one. Well, the nurse came out, and uh, my wife was pretty much out of it because of the pain blocks. So I got to pick which name. And I thought it's only appropriate that I choose names so that Kathy and I would have the same initials. Now, that, that probably destined her to go into the ministry because <laughs> she is a, a, a regional director of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, a ministry to college students. But uh, within the first week of her life, she uh, developed that nasty irritation called thrush. And we all know, as parents, if you ever had to deal with it, how that can spread. So we put on little white booties over her hands so that she wouldn't get it on her hands. And after a rather sleepless night, uh, I picked her up, went to the rocking chair in the living room, put her on my chest, and we rocked back and forth. And there is a picture. I had over a full day's growth beard, and we looked, I looked at that picture. Um, here I am with my head back, sleeping, whiskers and all, and uh, she's on my chest with this booty that looks kind of like the white tape that a boxer puts on before dunning the gloves. Already, she knocked me out. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm uh, glad I had the honor of uh, choosing the name, and I certainly did like being knocked out. So that, that's terrific. <laughs> so without further ado, our worship leader will take over. Well, thank you, Dad. It is such an honor to be with you all on this Father's Day weekend and newly minted federal observance of Juneteenth holiday this weekend as well. So just a, a great honor and privilege for my family to be worshiping with you all. And so I do want to begin as we worship, just blessing you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and praying for a special blessing on um, fathers today um, as we worship. So we're gonna begin worship with the hymn In the Cross, of Christ I glory. So we invite you to stand as you're able and join us in worshiping.
Good morning. The uh, scripture reading today is from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be you. to God. Well, again, it's a, a joy to, to be here, and worshiping in the room, but also I know saying hello to those worshiping online with us. Um, my brother John and I have been watching online over the last weeks, which has been a treat. And so we've been uh, with you in this series on the Psalms uh, over the last couple of weeks. And um, so just as a quick reminder of where we've been before we um, dig Psalm 23, a familiar text. Um, but so you've looked at Psalms 50 and Psalms 32. And in Psalm 50, right, that is a people who are a thankful people, that we give thanks with our hearts, our hands, and our voices. Uh, I, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, remember, um, Dad had you start with a round a rather elaborate round. Like, I was a voice major in college, and I was struggling a little bit, so special props and shout out for those of you who made that work. I was quite impressed. And, you know, Psalm 32 last week in that image, right, of God is our hiding place. Right? I just love that image, that God is that shelter, that refuge, that safe hiding place for us. And, you know, I thought it appropriate, it is, you know, Father's Day weekend, and God as our Father is described using metaphors and illustrations to, to help us understand who God is. And, of course, one of the ones we see throughout the scriptures is most poignantly captured in this Psalm 23, right, that God our Father is our shepherd. Now, Dad assured me that Psalm 23 can't be overdone, and so I just, I went with it, uh, many of you might know it by heart. Uh, as a, a pastor's kid, I heard it a lot, maybe at, at funerals, right? My dad tells me maybe one of the first sermons he preached was on this text, so it just seemed fitting today. I am really just in a year like the one we've had, a year to 18 months, this is the kind of reminder, right? God who guides and guards us through all the days of our life that I just think we, it's so foundational to come back to, and I hope there's a blessing in it for you this morning. Uh, so before I jump in too far, though, um, I did want to say we've, uh, Father's Day is upon us, right? And I've got a couple, let's see if I can get this going here. Oh, there we go. I've got a few pictures. Since I'm up front, I got to pick the pictures, right? So I don't know if you can see, but there's really flattering ones of my dad there where I'm in the upper right-hand corner. We've gone fishing. I was quite good at it that day, at least. Uh, and um, in the lower right hand, that's John and my sisters, Kimber and Rachel. Dad's being a good sport at some kind of amusement park, I think. And we got a confirmation pick or, uh, with my brother, Philip. So a lot going on. And um, just wanted to say and acknowledge, too, though, in this weekend that um, Father's Day, whether you're a father by birth or through adoption, um, or a spiritual parent, I know today and this weekend can also have bittersweet undertones, right, as we remember dads we've lost, uh, maybe even fresh losses, right? Um, or as um, fathers and parents, we also um, look to the struggles of our, our children. And so I just want to acknowledge there's a bittersweetness in this day, but do want to bless all of the, the dads and parents out there. So as we look at this Psalm 23 text... Uh, you know, we jump right into the image of God as the shepherd, right? And uh, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, I shall not want. 
And it goes on, we get to the green pastures and the still waters. I want you to think even just about that first statement. Do you hear the tension in that? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Really? Is that our, is that our experience? Is that our human experience? You know, and I was grappling with that text a little bit. I was like, what is the psalmist doing there? You know, is it, is it like a, if you're a Star Wars fan, is it like a Jedi mind trick? Like, I'm your shepherd, you shall not want. You know, is that what's going on? You know, I don't think so, but the psalmist does seem to be digging deep. It's a statement of faith and trust, right? The Lord is my shepherd, and if I believe that, and the truest thing I can say is that actually my deepest needs are met, right? And this good shepherd will guide and guard me through all the days of my life. And the good shepherd, it says, goes on, leads me beside quiet waters, makes me lie down in green pastures. Those, I love the, those active words, he makes me lie down, leads me. And I, I like that because I think sometimes we don't even know what we need, if I'm honest, right? If, if for, you know, parents, you remember maybe sometimes if you've worked with kids where they're like, I'm tired, I don't need a nap, as they're, you know, falling over and losing control, right? And, you know, sometimes you just know, oh, oh no, it is time to lay down, child, right? And even as adults, whether, you know, whether 8 or 80 years, we still need the Lord to make us lie down sometimes, we still need the Lord to say, come to the quiet waters, to lead us there. And especially in this pandemic, I think sometimes we haven't even been aware of the levels of exhaustion or sorrow we're carrying. And we've needed a shepherd. I had the privilege of uh, being with students this year. I have a couple pictures here. In May, we had our first kind of attempted a hybrid gathering as more students and faculty were vaccinated. And we actually studied Psalm 23 together online and then just had an afternoon where we went out to parks and lakes around the four states that I serve. And over 100 international students gathered across these four states. And literally, they went to green pastures and quiet waters, right? And it was so life-giving. I think students said, I didn't even know how much I missed this, right? Being even out together in these beautiful spaces, the Lord refreshed our souls. He got on paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. You are with me. God and your staff, they comfort me. Now this is an interesting part of the psalm, this idea of God to right paths. Now that's right before the dark valleys, right? The valley of the shadow of death. And often we think of these separate. But I wonder, sometimes the paths of our life, they take us through changing places, right? But what's different here is that even that's a path we'd rather avoid, and the shepherd, we wish the shepherd would kind of take us around it. What happens in this text is we're reminded that even when shepherd um, allows us to go right through it, the difference is he's with us, right? Good shepherd's presence is right there with us in the darkest time. And that alone can sustain us, right? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. These actually are images of a victory that's being celebrated, right? So even we've come through the dark valleys, the shadowy places with the presence of our good shepherd. And actually, even though enemies might have chased us right through that valley, the troubles of your life, the sorrows you're carrying, the sin we're trying to shake off, the Lord actually sets this incredible banquet of victory right in the presence of those same enemies. No matter how much our troubles, sorrows, and sin pursue us, the parents' passionate goodness and love pursues us all the more. And that's that last part of the psalm, and that's what I really loved here. It says, 
that surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's such a small thing, but my favorite word in the psalm is surely. Surely. Doesn't that just ring out as kind of a good news? No matter what has chased you, no matter what you've walked through, surely the goodness and love of the Lord has followed you, not just in pandemic, but all the days of your life. The psalm just before this that Dad originally was going to preach on is Psalm 22. And in Psalm 22, 9 and 10, it says, Yet you brought me out of the womb, you made me trust in you, Even at my mother's breast, from birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you've been my God. Sometimes, you know, we say, from the womb to the tomb, right? The mercy, the love, goodness of this shepherd, this father's pursuing love has chased us all our days. And won't just chase us all the days of this life, but as we trust in that shepherd will take us into eternity. It reminded me, I don't know if anyone has a story like this, but um, of a memory I have as a child of attempting to run away from home. My parents tell me I was a strong-willed child. I'm sure it was the briefest of seasons in my life. Um, But apparently, and I do have some memory of this, at one point I decided I was going to try things on my own. And I packed a bag with my brettes, I'm sure, and a brush and a few supplies. And, you know, I I, I don't even know if I said farewell, Dad, but I went to the end of our very long driveway, kind of out the parsonage, past the church. And I'm pretty sure I maybe made it just to the end of the driveway, perhaps to our neighbor Ostrid's house, before I thought, yep, that's far enough. That's, yep, going back. I might have waited there for you to come find me. That might have happened. Um... But you know, it, I think some of us have stories, or maybe this happened with some of your own kids, and it, it just reminded me, surely, the goodness and love of God followed me. Even when I said, Mm-mm, I think I'm going to try this on my own a while. I'm actually going to invite my youngest daughter, Phoebe, to join me. me as I was preparing was this, um, there's a children's book by Margaret Wise Brown called The Runaway Bunny. I don't know if this is a familiar title to you. I've got some of the illustrations here I'll pull up. Maybe better known for her book, Good Night Moon, but this is a great little allegorical gem that I just wanted to read a little bit of with Phoebe's help today. So Phoebe, how old are you? Eight years old. That's right. Maybe sh- let me make sure I got this on. Yeah, I did. You just hold it right like that. And we're going to read a little of this book, aren't we? Yeah. And you're going to be the bunny, right? The runaway bunny. And I'm going to be the mama. How does that sound? Good. Okay. So the story starts like this. It says, once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I'm running away. Well, if you run away run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, I will become a fish in a trout stream, and I will swim away from you. Well, if you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. There's the mama, see, in the picture, fishing. And there we go. And then actually the mama does some other things, right? The little bunny wants to run away to a mountain, and the mama becomes a mountain climber. The bunny wants to become a a crocus, right, in a hidden garden, and the mama becomes a gardener. And then we read, If you are a gardener and find me, I will be a bird and fly away from you. Well, if you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you come home to. Look at that tree. If you become a tree, I will become a little sailboat, and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind 
and I will blow you where I want you to go. There's the little sailboat. Look at those ears. There's a giant sailboat. And then they go one final place to the circus, don't they, Miss Phoebe? Yeah. And the bunny becomes a trapeze artist, and the mother walks the tightrope to find her bunny, and we end this way. If you become a tightrope walker and walk across the air, I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and I will hug you. Shucks. I might as well stay here where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. Well done, Phoebe. Thank you so much. Oh, you can have a seat. little bunny said, oh shucks, just a little bunny. The invitation for us out of the psalm is to consider, are we running away from our parents' passionate pursuit, that father shepherd's love? Or are we turning to receive the embrace, to receive that witness in love, that it might sustain us all the days of our life? So I'd love to close us with a prayer to that end before we worship again in song. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are the good shepherd. Thank you that your love follows us. It leads us to quiet waters and green pastures. It walks with us through the darkest valleys. It sets a table before us, even the presence of our enemies. And surely, surely that love follows us all the days of our lives. Would we courageously and in humility turn afresh today and in these days to receive that goodness and love, that it would be a worship and honor to you, and it would gladden our hearts as your children. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship together, and as you're able, we invite you to join us in singing the hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. Be true to thee till death. 
Well, we have some um, several prayer requests this morning as we move toward a time of prayer as a community. And so I'll, I'll share a couple of these that are coming in before we move to pray and lift those petitions to the Lord. So several members of your Glendale family that you're still um, unable to join here that we're going to be praying for, the uh, Dwayne Meyer, June Haas, Elaine, and June Huss. And then we're also going to be praying for the safe delivery of a healthy baby for uh, Ashley, as Sam and Ashley um, Hag await the birth of their child this week. So those are some of the ones coming in from the church. And then many of you have shared requests. We want to lift up, um, not just to pray today, but throughout the coming week. Um, so a few for some healing requests. So from Sally Rutherford for pneumonia, there's a request. Um, Penny, um, we just learned, yes, that Penny's sister, Pat, um, is waiting for, has surgery if this coming in the next couple of weeks for cancer, and they're um, pursuing a course of treatment. We'll pray um, for that. Um, healing for Dylan's dad, Justin, who had shoulder and arm surgery just yesterday, very recently. So praying for healing there. Um, as well as healing from um, addiction for my brother Philip. So dad submitted that request to, he's in an addiction treatment program right now. Also there's a request for healing. Um, this is from Rick and Kay Dunning. Um, praying for healing for June, the, um, their mother June, as she's making progress. And for some wisdom for upcoming board exams for Michael. And some other friends we're going to pray for healing of. Um, the burn setters, setters as well. And then we also have some joyful things to celebrate. Um, yes, an engagement coming up, a wedding date to be determined. Um, this is from Brian and Mary Davis um, in celebrating the joyful engagement of their daughter Martha to Andrew. So very exciting. Um, so let's go ahead and move into a posture of prayer. And after each petition I raise, yeah, well, I know it's your tradition to pray. I'll pray, Lord, in your love. And as a congregation, you'll say, hear our prayer. And we'll close in the Lord's Prayer together. Let's move to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of gathering here and online, but we long to be together. And we pray for these members of the Glendale family that are still unable to worship, that you would bring a special blessing to them, to Jim and Susan Ross, Dwayne Meyer, June Haas, Elaine Christensen, and June Huss. Lord, in your love. Lord, we bring to you Sam and Ashley Haig as they await the arrival of their baby this week, and we pray for a safe delivery and healthy mom and baby um, as they joyfully anticipate this adventure um, of this new child with your guidance. Lord, in your love. And Lord, there are many who need your healing, and we ask that as a good shepherd, you too would also be a great physician to so many. Lord, we pray for Philip, who is in treatment for his addictions, that you would empower and sustain him to become sober and to have courage to walk a lifetime of sobriety for the sake of your kingdom and those he loves. Lord, in your love, And we pray for Gail's, um, uh, Gail um, Pollard and for Dylan's dad, Justin, who just had shoulder arm surgery yesterday. Um, Lord, I pray for relief from pain and that you would bring quick healing and mobility in their body. Um, Lord, in your love. Lord, we look to you for healing from pneumonia for Sally Rutherford and pray that you would bring your healing touch to her body and ease the breathing, um, and would you bring a, a full restoration and sustain her in your love, Lord, in your love. And Lord, we lift up Penny's sister, Pat. She awaits uh, time for surgery after this cancer diagnosis. Um, we pray for skill and wisdom in that surgery and as they plan treatments. And we pray um, also for a deep trust and faith as they walk in unknowns and waiting in these next weeks. Would you sustain them with your kindness and your goodness, Lord, in your love? 
And Lord, we lift up Rick and Kay Dunning and their family. We pray for the continued healing of their mother, June, and the, celebrate the progress being made. We lift up Michael as he takes his last board exams just tomorrow for that sharpness of minds and success in that endeavor. And we pray for continued healing for Joe and Jude Bernstetter, that you would guide the doctors in finding out what is going on. You know all things. Would you reveal and make a way forward? Lord, in your love. And lastly, we celebrate with those who are celebrating, even as we mourn with those who mourn. And so with joy, we share in the joy and upcoming celebrations of Martha and Andrew and their upcoming wedding. We um, delight with Brian and Mary um, and pray that this joy would be a joy to many as they await that big day. Lord, in your love. And for all the prayers unknown and unspoken, maybe, you see them. We do lift them to you. And we entrust ourselves to you as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I want to pray a benediction for you this morning out of the Psalm 23. And if you're comfortable in receiving a benediction, sometimes with our students I'll say, would you just hold your hands out like this in front of you as I pray a blessing that you could kind of in your heart receive it today from God. The brothers and sisters, family of God, I bless you to know the good and pursuing love of our Heavenly Father, the one who longs to shepherd and guide you through the darkest valleys to green pastures and still waters, that you would know that love today and always as you turn to your shepherd. May it be so now and all the days of our life. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll have a, a few announcements. Our service wraps up. Someone here to do announcements this morning? Perhaps not today. See what we have going on. We might just have to stick around a while. All right. There's just a couple of announcements this morning, and I might open it up and see any others to be added. Uh, the first one is for the open door pantry. Uh, volunteers are needed for the next food distribution that's coming up on July 14th from 2 to 3, 30 p.m. in the parking lot. We also need help delivering food to a few families in the area. So if that's something that interests you or would bring you joy or you know someone who it would, you can give them a nudge and contact Sandy Driscoll if you're able to help. So that's the first announcement. Um, secondly, it says for worship assistance, I saw a, a sign-up sheet in the back that if you're interested in helping read, it sounds like read the scripture or serve in worship as an usher in some other way, um, we need some helpers. Also, if you're not as much of a reader up front, looks like could use some people serving to greet in the parking lot as well. So there's clipboards in the back to be signed up, or you can also contact the church office. Since our normal announcement giver isn't here, I'll just want to open up anything else that we've missed or that the congregation wants to share or announce.
and then hop on in. Jump in. Get to <laughs> Anything else? Peace and shepherding love today. We pray for rain, maybe just after we get to our cars and in our homes, but that it would soak the earth, right? We all use that rain. So go in God's peace and have a blessed week. Thank you for worshiping.